them. I do what I want. It had to be somebody like the Rebbe, the, the, you know, the Chabad people. Chabad people are very uh, individual. Let's put it <laughs> individual. You can't tell them what to do, right? If, the, if anything would have happened to the Rebbe, that would have happened. It would have been just total chaos. And nevertheless, the Rebbe, did, and the Rebbe knew it, but nevertheless, the Rebbe did not pay any attention whatsoever. He threw himself totally on God. Totally. So to, to do something personally, to save myself and show that the communists are right in any way, to show that I'm afraid of them or that I make any existence of them so totally evil that I'm not going to give them any attention, any power. They're not going to defeat me in any way. They're not going to take any of my energy. In any way, they're not going to defeat me. Gam la'achar shabo kavutza shotrim there came another group of, sol- of uh, soldiers, a third group, Gam b'neim o yehudi b'shem kavalov, b'tziv olav lakum, and said to the Rebbe, stand up. And they wanted to tell the Rebbe that he was free. Heishiv a Rebbe that said, he said, I'm not going to stand up. He kuoto, they beat him up again. Hamako haya kaval, the one who did it was the Jew. The Jew was the one who beat him up. Ach loel didn't help. Kavalov hit malei chamas retzach. This Kavalov, he became... How do you say? Uh, murderously angry. And he said, Mi tibya na na vochim. Mi tibya na vochim. We will teach you a lesson. And the Rebbe said back in Yiddish, Let's see who teaches who. Right? <laughs> Let's see who's going to be the teacher. <laughs> Who's going to teach who? He could have just pulled out his gun and just shot him in a second. There was no problem, you know. He could have choked him. He could have done anything he wanted to. But Avur Zaman, Nichnas Ushotriim, and they said to the Rebbe, come with us to the office. They took him to the office. There they told him that he was not going to be killed. Hakala that Lulav said. They said that they're releasing him from the Beit Asurim. They're letting him out of the prison. Omagalimoto, and they're sending him to three years exile in Kastroma. Huh? Kastroma is, I think it's like in, in um, Kazakhstan or someplace like that. Kastroma. It's one of these terrible, in Russia, it's very, very large. And there's uh, areas, areas of Russia that are near China and Mongolia and these, you know, these uh, wasteland places. So it's in these places, like it's, it was tremendously hot in the summer, tremendously cold in the winter, and all these weird people lived there. Kishet Mitkarav Rebbe Lishuchan, when the Rebbe came next to the table, he saw the papers that were in front of him, and he understood that this was the, the, this was the decision. <clears throat> and this is what I just told you. Let me just, I'll just read this to you in English. On the top, it said, first of all, death. Death. He was supposed to be shot immediately when he was brought into the, the jail. But if you read the story, what he wrote, they took him into the jail, and he just sort of, they left him on a chair. And they figured he wouldn't know what was going on. And he just, they, he just sort of walked, and he took a turn on a hall. And he just sat there, and he rolled himself a cigarette. And he had tobacco. He rolled himself a cigarette, and he smoked. Someone came out from another room, and they said, oh, hello, how are you? And he said his name. He said, well, where, where are you sitting here? He said, I'm just sitting, I'm resting. He said, where were you supposed to be? And he said, the name of the room. When he said the name of the room, the person said, that's where you were supposed to be. That's the room where everyone went, that they would kill him when they came in. He says, that's where you were supposed to be. By the time they took him to the place, it had already, the time had gone when they were supposed to kill him. Or the murder, whatever it was. In any case, the, the procedure had been passed. And then in, the, in order to make new procedure, they couldn't do it. It took too long. Was too, they, took, they, they only could follow orders. You couldn't, they couldn't do what they wanted to. Where is the prison? Spralinka huh? prison. I think it was in Leningrad. Spralinka. Huh? What would you say? I don't know where that is. No. Leningrad. Leningrad is the same as, as, uh, as what is it? Petroburg today. It's called Petroburg. St. Petroburg. Are you familiar with a jail called Danamora? No. Thank God, no. It's an all jail town in upstate. It's in New York. Okay. 
Let's just skip. Let's we'll skip a little bit over to here. Thankfully, not for Kasha. Okay, good. Kasher Hodio the Rebbe, when they told the Rebbe that they're letting him go for three years to Kastrama, he said, "What type of a train?" They asked him, "What type of a train would you like to go?" He said, "In Mezdonad Radna." 